and welcome to Summer Lightus Online today. Uh, so glad you're able to join us, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, you are so welcome. Uh, my name's Stu. My name's Lucy. And together we lead Summer Lightus in Hamwell. And it's great to have Lucy back this week. I'm back. Yay. Um, <laughs> I wonder how your week's been. Uh, I wonder if on the chat you might put uh, in one word how your week has been. So Lucy, sum up your week in one word for One us. word, that's yeah. quite hard. Um, and I can't even look at the chat to steal your words. Uh, it's quite boring, but I'm gonna go with it. I'm just gonna say full yeah. as my weekly word. Um, homeschooling, work and caring for my mum. It's been a full week. Yeah. But how about you? You're not getting off the hook. Come on then. Um, I, would go with, I would go with uh, hopeful. Um, oh. Uh, you looking about that. forward to um, schools going back this week um, and hopefully of home learning. Uh, looking forward to perhaps things changing as the roadmap unfolds Indeed. over the next few months. Uh, so yeah, hopeful. Spring is in the air, starting to see a few shoots in the garden and so on. Hopeful. Um, nice. Today, coming up in our service, we're going to carry on our series uh, ex uh, in Lent, where we're exploring lessons from people who go through wilderness experiences and looking at what they might say to us uh, today. And Jeremy is going to be speaking for us. Uh, before we get to anything else, let's start as we start every week in worship by lifting our attention, our focus uh, to our Heavenly Father in worship. So why don't I pray for us? As we begin, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you, the great and awesome God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, mm. yet you also choose to draw near to us. And we pray this morning as we gather together from our homes that you would make yourself known to us. Open our eyes to see the wonders of your love. Yes, Jesus. Help us to place our trust in you once again. And as we do, would you draw close? Come, Lord, Come, Lord we pray.
become the monster. I may be small, but I'm a fighter. Cause you are strong and fears a liar. Today I put on heaven's armor Sword and shield cannot be conquered I raise a shout cause I'm a warrior Your battle cry will lead me onward Jesus, we thank you that your love shines in the dark. I thank you that we can trust you with our fears, that we don't need to be afraid. But the times when we are afraid, we can know that you are with us and that you're holding our hand and we can be strong and courageous with you. Amen. 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 Uh, Well, it's a bit time for a bit of uh, church family news. And uh, we haven't heard yet, but we're hopefully hearing in the next few weeks about the possibility of resuming uh, public yeah. worship at St Melitus. Um, and so over the next uh, week or so, we're going to be asking people just kind of about their thoughts about this, how they're feeling, whether they'll be wanting to come back to worship in the building. Um, I'm sure there'll be a whole mixture of different perspectives depending on where you're at with things. But it'll be really helpful in our planning to know. So look out for that in the coming days, um, probably via email, um, just to get your feeling on things. Uh, secondly, I uh, just want to highlight uh, this week, the work of the Food Bank, uh, once again, I know that so many of you uh, give in different ways, whether through volunteering at the Food Bank or dropping things off. Just want to encourage you to keep doing that, keep supporting their work. Uh, they're doing amazing mm, stuff, amazing. Um, supporting the most vulnerable in our community. Lucy, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on with family's work at the moment? Well, today, if you are watching on Sunday live now at the 10 o'clock premiere, it is not too late to sign up for family worship on Zoom. So if you're a family at home with children, um, aimed at kind of probably age 3 to 11 is the rough aim, but all are welcome um, of any age um, children to join in with that and we're going to have some fun on Zoom together and Margaret's going to be speaking to us. Um, sign up via the website. Um, and if you're watching later in the week, I hope you had fun at it. And also this week, uh, Wednesday is Little Stars. That's our naught to four year old. So if you're preschool or lower, um, 11 to 11.30 on Wednesday, we're going to have some fun on Zoom together. And we have craft and a story. And do share that with friends. It doesn't have to just be if you come to St. Melitus. If you've got friends with little ones who think would like to join a free Zoom call to have something to do with their little one, they are most welcome. Just sign up on our website and then the Zoom link will be sent to you once you have booked. Uh, and finally from us uh, today, um, I know the summer feels like a long way away um, and we're hopeful that life will be very, very different by then. Assuming that life is very different by then, a new wine I'm going to put on a summer uh, festival, uh, a smaller one than they normally do, uh, but we would love to encourage you if you feel able to, to and you'd like to, uh, to come along with us to that summer five days. We're booked uh, in. Uh, 24th to 28th of uh, July, an opportunity to gather with others, to worship, to praise, wonderful children's groups and a great time, great opportunity to kind of connect and build 
uh, community together. Much so, needed this summer as well, if you think about how we haven't gathered together. Um, if you hate camping, there are other alternatives, so don't let that put you off. We will be there, though. My husband loves camping, don't you not? Yes. We will be camping, but you can um, find places to uh, round about. Do get in touch with us, and we can help you with that if that's something you're worried about. Um, so you go to the new one website, and you can book there. Uh, we're now going to turn to prayer, then we'll have our reading as we look at Esther today, uh, and then Jeremy's going to speak for us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you today and thank you for the privilege of praying for others. We ask you first to cleanse our hearts and show us if there is any unconfessed sins in our own life so that our prayers for others will not be hindered. We thank you that through your name we can come boldly before you and pray with confidence according to your will and know that you hear us. We lift up those in our neighborhood, in our city and in our church. Begin with those who follow you and help them influence others for good. Let them be salt and light, pointing others to you. Deepen their love for you and for the people around them. Guard them from hypocrisy or from giving into temptations that could harm the cause of Christ. Raise up leaders who will serve you faithfully at all costs. Turn the hearts of fathers towards the children and families towards you. Help them exemplify your values and make them bold in their faith. Strengthen our own families, we pray, and those closest to us, Lord. May our love for you help us to love and forgive others and make a difference in our world. We pray for teachers, for students, and all those in authority and leadership, both locally and around the world. Give them your mind and surround them with godly counselors who will exercise integrity and work for justice, morality, and freedom. Help them to esteem you, not dismiss you. Send revival, Lord. We pray for the lost, the hurting, the lonely, the sick, the bereaved, and those who are imprisoned behind both visible and invisible walls. Send your comfort and your peace. Bless them with your calming presence, all those who are without hope. Protect the defenseless and hold them close to your heart. We pray for laborers to tell the good news of Jesus to people around the world, Jesus. My heart cries out for persecuted believers too. Make them brave and give them your powerful protection. We pray you will bring swift justice to those who want to destroy the innocent and those who carry your name. Bind the powers of evil, Lord, and strengthen believers everywhere. We see so many needs, Jesus, but you are adequate for every need. Your name is powerful and your power is great. So it is in your name that we pray and believe. Amen. A reading from Esther chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping and wailing. Many lay in sackcloths and ashes. When Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai, she was in great distress. She sent clothes for him to put on instead of his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hafak, one of the king's eunuchs assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So Hafak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to him, including the exact amount of money Haman 
had promised to pay into the royal treasury for destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict for their annihilation, which had been published in Susa to show to Esther and explain to her, explain it to her. And he told him to instruct her to go into the king's presence, to beg for mercy and plead for him and plead with him for her people. Hafak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, all the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends his gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back his answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows that, who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent the reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law, and I will perish. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning. My name's Jeremy, and this morning we're going to be continuing our series on lessons from the wilderness and looking at times of uncertainty and the story of Esther. I don't know how familiar you are with this story, but I think it's got a lot to tell us about of particular relevance during the pandemic. As Stu said last week, none of us will be unaffected by what has happened with the pandemic. But as somebody else said, it's as if we're all in the same storm, but we're on different boats. And so our experiences will be different. But before we get to the story of Esther, I want to um, tell you about a, a time of uncertainty I experienced. As a priest, I was uh, doing a couple of funerals one day at a local crematorium, one at 1.30pm, one at 3pm. I arrived in plenty of time for the one at 1.30pm. I parked my car and then I thought I hadn't really parked it very well, so I thought I'd move my car. And when I tried to restart the car, it wouldn't restart. So I thought, what do I do now? So I called up the breakdown organisation and they agreed they could get somebody out to sort the car out to arrive just after two o'clock when I would have finished the first funeral service. So it all went well, the breakdown van arrived, they restarted the car. But then a problem arose. You see, the driver said, you realise if you turn the engine off, you won't be able to restart your car. The battery is done for. So then I had a real dilemma. It didn't make any sense to leave the car still running whilst I went and did another service. I was concerned that if I called out the breakdown vehicle again after the second service and they came and I still had to then get up to a garage, get the battery changed, I'd run into problems with my um, other appointments I'd got later on in the day. I realised that the garage I took my car to be serviced at wasn't that far from the crematorium. So I looked at my watch and thought, mm, there may just about be a time. Let me phone up the garage, see what they have to say. I explained the situation. They said, yeah, bring the car up. We'll be ready. We'll just drop a new battery in. No problem at all. So I drove up to the garage. Now, some of you will know I tend to be a little bit optimistic. And yes, it was a bit further than I remembered it being. But I got there. When I got there, they said, actually, we've decided we're going to lend you a car while we sort your car out. It's just parked up the road a, a little way. Uh, five minutes jog later, 
I managed to get into this car and start to drive back. I'm getting a bit worried now that I'm going to be running out of time and I'm not going to get back in time for the funeral. But all's going well. It's still only about 10 to 3 and I'm only about half a mile from the crematorium when suddenly the cars all slow down in front of me and I realise that I'm actually in the funeral cortege. Now, at this crematorium, they had a separate area for priests to park. And so, once we'd driven into the crematorium, I just went off to the side, parked my car, got out, went to put my robes on, came back as if nothing had happened. Nobody made a comment at all. And so, proceeded with the service, then went back to the garage, um, swapped the cars over, went to my other appointments. You can imagine that uh, there was a fair amount of uncertainty and anxiety for me during that whole experience. I don't know today what I would do if I was faced with that situation once more. We now come to look at the book of Esther. It's a short book in the Old Testament and I'd encourage you to read it. It's got a lot in it and I can only scratch the surface today. The background to the reading is that King Xerxes is king of the area from India across to the Nile, 127 provinces. And he's got divorced from his wife and his advisers suggest they have an extended beauty contest in order to find the successor as queen. And Esther, Esther's an orphan who's been brought up by her uncle Mordecai, wins this contest and becomes queen. They were both members of the Jewish race and at that stage Jews were not in a very powerful position in the area. One day Mordecai hears two of King Xerxes' officers discussing how they're going to assassinate him and so he lets Esther know about this and Esther tells the king giving Mordecai credit and uh, the assassination is prevented. At that time the second most powerful person in the kingdom was a guy called Haman and he had a really big ego thought he was really important to the extent that he made people kneel down in front of him when he came by and Mordecai said I'm not kneeling down in front of you and that really upset Haman and so he manipulated the situation and persuaded the king to sign a decree that a few months later all the Jews across all 127 provinces would be killed. Needless to say, this uh, was very worrying for, for Mordecai and also for Esther. So, And this is where our reading comes in, that uh, Mordecai goes to talk to Esther about the situation. And first of all, Esther says, look, um, I really don't want to approach the king because if you approach the king and he hasn't asked for you, he can decide to have you killed. And so that's not a good situation. But as Mordecai points out, well, if you don't do that, mm. all the Jews are going to be killed anyway. So Esther was really between a rock and a hard place. Do I approach the king, run the risk that I'm going to be killed but because I've approached the king? Or do I allow myself as a Jew to be killed? She may have thought, well, maybe they'll realise I'm Jew. I may be OK. And Mordecai says, no, no, that's not going to work. So Esther says, can we get people gathered together and fast for three days and I and my maid will fast as well and then we'll, we'll I'll approach the king. Now there are many twists and turns that go uh, through the story but just to cut the long story short um, the king has a sleepless night. He decides to ask somebody to read to him all the details of the events that have happened thus far in his reign and that includes the account of how Mordecai prevented the assassination attempt. And the king decides he really should do something good for Mordecai. And then there is a, a meal over a couple of nights between Esther Xerxes and Haman, the guy who persuaded the king to issue this decree about the Jews. And so Esther says at that meal, that Haman, you've persuaded the king to sign this decree that the Jews, which includes me, are going to be killed. And it includes Mordecai too. The king was absolutely livid and furious about this. And as a consequence, Haman lost his life 
and it all ended okay for Esther and Mordecai, and Mordecai ends up becoming the second most powerful person in the kingdom. Now, if you've managed to keep up with me so far, and there are many other twists and turns in the story which I would encourage you to read, then you may be saying, what on earth has that got to do with the situation we find ourselves in in March 2021, as we live with the pandemic? Well, whilst we may not have the same dilemmas as, as Esther, I do think we will face many uncertainties and challenges as we emerge from the pandemic. We may well need to show courage in uncertainty. Some of us may be anxious about our families, our finances, our futures, our friends, and may have real questions about our faith. Well, if that's where you're at this morning, I'd want to encourage you to come to God. Come quietly, taking time in the same way that, that Esther took time, asking God to fill you afresh with a sense of the presence of God, the sense of the Holy Spirit, that something other that will reassure you that what the Bible says is absolutely true, that God will never leave you or give up on you, that God is with you in all circumstances. You may feel this morning that you can't even find the words to pray to God. And if that's you, again, I've got a couple of suggestions. One, share that with somebody. Ask them to pray for you. Maybe with two or three close friends. Get them to pray for you. And then secondly, maybe you can pray a couple of three or four word prayers or the Lord's Prayer. Those of you who've been joining in with the Lent course will be familiar with the three word prayer to God. I love you. Just repeating that. In the midst of your fear and anxiety, maybe you can pray that. Or the prayer that John Wimber used to say, Oh God, help! You see, God knows where we're at. But we need to be real and honest with ourselves, with God and with others. Esther got people to fast for three days before she took action. And I think sometimes we need to pause, ask others to join us in praying and not rush into action. Esther could have felt isolated, but she knew she had the support of others. And we too can keep in touch with each other, even if we are still shielding and support each other. I'd also encourage you to read the Psalms. There are many Psalms of lament, Psalms which express deep sorrow at the situation people find themselves in and asking God to help, to intervene. At a head level, we may know that God understands where we're at at the current time. But it's easy at a feelings level to feel we are alone and anxious about the future. So I think it's also helpful to remind ourselves that although the road ahead may be uncertain, we can be confident that God is with us, that God will never let us go, that no experience is wasted in God's economy. And at the end of the day, love wins and our future as Christians is secure. In Matthew 6, 34, it records Jesus saying, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let's pray. Lord, we don't know what may lie ahead. We know that you will be with us. We know that you can be trusted. Help us to be aware of your presence with us, your Holy Spirit leading us forward to whatever the future may hold for your glory.
Father, thank you for your great love for us. Thank you, O oh, the God who gives us a hope and a future. And Lord, even in the wilderness, even in exile, even in the desert, you are working. And we pray that you would work in each one of us. Strengthen us in you, we pray. Strengthen our faith and our trust in you. That we would love and serve the world around us. And we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're coming to the end of our online time together. And if you're someone who watches every week, you know I always say, don't I? Put the kettle on because it's time to join us for a coffee or Zoom call. But you won't be joining me today because I will be doing um, family worship on Zoom. But Stu will be there, won't you, my love? And he'll be in the church all on his own. So go and join him over Zoom. Over Zoom, not in the church. Um, so that he's not lonely on the computer. And um, have some fun catching up together and doing community together. Uh, so let me pray a final prayer of blessing on oh, us dear. today. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all who you love and care for and pray for this day and evermore. Amen. Amen. Take care everyone. God bless.